Hello and welcome to today's lovely Canva demo. So today I am taking a look at uh, a relatively new feature in Canva where they finally added um, this option that you can add drop shadows uh, to objects. It's more like photo boxes and things like that. I haven't seen it on sort of the elements tool, so like the, the stickers and illustrations, but certainly if you've got a, uh, a box with a photo in it, it's something that you can apply to. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to share my screen and uh, show you some ideas of um, how you can use this new feature, where it is, um, just so you can be aware of it, you might not have realised that it's here. So I just need to uh, move my screen a little bit so I can see all the features. Okay, so first of all, what you need to do is have uh, some sort of photo box or, you know, image. So um, I'll just pick this lady with uh, some sort of jewelry. Why not? Um, and um, what you need to do is when you've selected this, you can also size the box to how, how you want it to be. So if we sort of crop in a little bit more. And then what you want to do is go to effects. So it's in the same place as your background remover and also the smart mock-up. So there's a whole new load of various, I guess, sort of plugins. Um, I don't know sort of how Canva sort of sees them, but there's sort of these extra features. Um, and if you just scroll down, so we've got the background remover, which is only available in Pro. You've got the smart mockups tool, which I've done a training on um, a few weeks ago, I think it was. So check that out if you'd like to see how you can um, use that feature. And then if you scroll down, there's now the shadows. So if we look at see all, we can see the different types. So it works in a similar way to the smart mockups tool in that you can apply it and then um, try different ones before you then click apply. So there's this glow one, which uh, puts it all the way around like a glow. Uh, there's a drop shadow one, which offsets it down to either side an angle where it's a bit snazzy, I suppose, a curved one where it's sort of, there's like an almost an arch of the shadow. Page lift, which is another kind of arch, but it's just sort of a different um, angle. And you've got a drop, sh a backdrop, sorry, that it's called, where it's as if your uh, picture is standing up and then the uh, shadow is, is further kind of cast back as if there's quite a strong light in front. So a kind of more standard drop shadow is just the drop. So if we, when, when we clicked on any of these, you've got this sort of, it looks a bit like an abacus um, and it's just your way of customizing it. So if we click on that, it means you can change the color. So I could have like my brand color if I wanted, have a navy, soften it down a bit if I wanted to. You can choose which angle you want it. So you could have it going top right and any of these just going to the bottom. Um, and so you can play around and decide where you want it to be. Um, I'd certainly keep an eye on, you know, what your settings are. If you've got multiple objects where you want to have, um, have this drop shadow effect, make sure that you're ma matching it or making sure that it's similar. So don't have like one drop shadow going off to the side and one to here. Keep it on, on the same page um, or, you know, in, in your kind of document. Try and keep to a similar style it will just look more consistent rather than this one and this one and this one. Um, so yeah, so you can um, also change like how much it's blurred. So if you want to really soften it or you can have it a really like a crisp uh, one. So I think a kind of a softer one is quite nice. You can see how much of a transparency you want. So if you want to fade it back or make it stronger, um, you can also affect the angle. So this is where it gets into that kind of, um, that sort of twisty version. Um, so you can add a bit of a twist in it if you like, that looks quite smart. And the offset is just sort of like how far away that shadow is from this uh, object. Um, so if we make it a little bit more transparent and up the blur, so that looks quite nice. So 
if you decided that you wanted to make sure that all your images are like that, you could just make a note of these different settings um, and apply, for, apply that to your next image that's on that same page. You then need to click apply and then it's you know included in that. So let's have a look and see um, on a, another kind of object just out of interest. So let's have a circle. So you can see here, if we click on the circle, this is just a basic element. You don't have this kind of access to the effects tool, but say you wanted to have a, a circle feature, let's give it a go that we use one of the photo frames in a circle. So let's pop that there. So we'll need to put um, some sort of image in. So we could put this lady in, or let's put the Easter eggs in just as something different, something a bit colourful. So if I click on that um, and then click on filter, no, ah, okay. <laughs> In my head, I thought that we would be able to do that, <laughs> but we can't. So, um, so yeah, so I had thought maybe with, by using the, um, these elements, to, uh, sorry, the um, photo frames that we'd be able to circumnavigate that, but it looks like we don't have that effects option that we had. However, if you used um, the background tool, so I'll delete that. Let's give it. Um, if you use the background remover tool, you can um, use that drop shadow, and I'll show you in a minute. So let's have a look. Um, let's get a balloon. Um, so let's pick one of these actually. This one's already got the shadow um, removed. So if I put a bit of a, I don't know, a blue background. Um, let's have a, a slight like more sky blue. So this one, this particular image already has the background removed. So um, if we go to the um, effects, we have now got that access. So you can, you know, pick an object uh, or pick a picture and use the remove background tool um, if you've got pro. So let's go back to the shadows and let's maybe use the backdrop one and see what that looks like. Um, and we can go to the effects again, so we could change the colors, put, you know, sort of um, a softer color, you could put a contrasting color, you know, have a purple, um, you know, whatever you feel looks best. I'm gonna go with the kind of my teal color in my, in my brand kit. And again, you can sort of decide sort of how much it's blurred and how much it's, how strong it is. So let's, you can also play with the angle there. So this is quite good for the this balloon thing. That looks quite cool. Uh, horizontal angle, Ooh, we can move it over there. So again, you're thinking about where the light source is kind of coming in from. Um, I might make a bit more of a, do I want more blur? No, transparency, let's knock it back. And then click apply. So, here we've got, you know, a couple of options here where you can see this, you know, shadow tool applied. So let's just um, add another page and uh, let's pick a different color for the background here. We'll have a soft gray. So say you've got a product um, and um, a little while ago I did, um, did some work on like showing how you could do like a reflections effect using you know by replicating um you know duplicating and transparencies and stuff like that for a, a friend who does has a jewelry business so let's have a look um at like a um let's do a bracelet and we'll pick something that we can add a bit of a um uh, drop shadow too. So, and we'll remove the background. So you could have your kind of flat image here. And if you applied the drop shadow like this, 
um, it could look quite nice depending on kind of the context of like how you want to use it. But if you had an image and you wanted to add a drop shadow, there is a bit of a drop shadow naturally in this particular design. Um, but let's remove the background just so you can see this process. Just takes a little moment and we'll click apply. Um, let's make this a bit bigger just so we can see how it looks. You can also crop into it a bit more. And then we'll move that original image over. So let's click on our new image. Um, I'll also do a little copy and paste of that because it's quite interesting to see the like what happens at each process. So we'll click on effects. So we've already removed the background. And then if we go back to shadows, we can have a little play and see which one would work. So we've used the backdrop one and we've used the standard drop shadow. So we could see what page lift does. Um, I don't think the page lift or curve would probably do anything because that's more useful if you've got like a very square or rectangle rectangular object you know image um, let's try the angle one or the standard drop shadow backdrop oh quite like the backdrop again for this one um, but let's let's use the um, and then the glow don't like the glow I so I really like the backdrop one I'm quite interested in in this one I'm like ooh, ooh. So again, you could um, you could keep it the standard black. Um, we could make it a lot more transparent, so it's off, um, more subtle. Uh, let's play around with the um, kind of angles. I probably want to put it about there. I don't want it so super duper far away, um, and I do want it a bit more blurred. And it is. It's just looking at it you know, using your, your eyeballs <laughs> and deciding what is, you know, what works for you. Um, and I, I think that looks pretty good, actually. So it just means that if you didn't like the shadow that's in the uh, original image, you know, there is one there. Um, or you wanted to have this on a, you know, a coloured background as we've got here. It just means that you can then have a lot more control over like what colored background it is. So this could be your branded background. You know, if, for example, you had um, sort of very pinky toned, um, maybe not that kind of shade of pink, but you wanted it on some sort of pink background, you could do so. Um, or, you know, have it as a, you know, one of the kind of defaults there. Um, let's go back to the grey. I prefer the grey. Or you could have it on the pure white, you know, if you're like, I don't want it to be, um, you know, on this sort of soft toned uh, background that's there. You want it the pure white, that's part of your, your design. So there you go. That is having a little go at creating some drop shadows or applying drop shadows. Um, as we saw together, you can't apply it to any of the elements, including the photo frames. Um, so if you wanted to have a round um, object, you know, to, to, to sort of put it on, then you'd have to sort of go into the photos and sort of see what was there. Um, so let's just see. So let's out of it and just let's experiment here so if you wanted to be able to have a you know a circle shadow that you could then maybe pop an object on top it'd be interesting to see if this one we can add an effect because it was in the photos effects let's do a and drop shadow. Transparency a bit small. 
So if you wanted to use this and then like maybe had a, uh, you know, you're creating your own sticker, you wanted to have, you know, because I've been using like little kind of roundels or just circles with things in. Um, so say I wanted to that have that and have like my text on top. You would just need to make sure if we zoom in a bit, you know, if you're doing some more detailed work, just sort of top tip. So you just want to make sure that the under one is covered. And then if we make that white, let the zoom out. So this could be a text box sticker that I use. Um, and I've been able to add that drop shadow because I'm just layering it. So I couldn't add it to this particular just plain circle, but by adding it to this object, you know, in the photos that, that was there. And so you could do the same principle that, you know, if you wanted this to be a text box, you could just overlay a um, just pop a rectangle or square shape on top in your color and put some text on top. Um, you know, so think about it in that way or, you know, just play with it, you know, try and have a little think about how you can use this tool in maybe other ways um, and using it to, to layer things up if you need to. But that is a way that you could add um, a drop shadow. You wouldn't be able to do it to sort of more complicated shapes. So if, for example, you wanted to have um, use of one of these feature designs, for example, or, you know, if we look at some of these, these are all very, um, you know, like that, that's, that's got a lot of like shapes. You're not going to find something that works in the same way. But if you really wanted to add a drop shadow to it, what you could do is put it into its own um, uh, document. And if you had pro, you could download it with a transparent background, bring it up, uh, upload, re-upload it into Canva. So it's a PNG file with a transparent background, then it's seen as an image. So you could then apply this drop shadow. So there's still kind of caveats to how you do it. It can be a little bit uh, a, bit, a bit tricky. Um, so this one, because it's seen as a bit more of a, I guess it's a hybrid between a, uh, although it's in the elements, it probably also would appear in the photos. You can actually apply a shadow. So there will be some images that you can then create um, that you can add add it to so you know you can so it's just the case of having a play there will be cases where you'll be like oh I can't do I can't use that you know um, it's just sort of have an experiment anyway thank you so much for watching um, if you've been watching on replay in within the Facebook group you know put a hashtag replay be interesting to see you know who's been watching this um if there's any particular tools or features that you would like me to do a little demo on um, please comment below and um, i will check it out and um, each friday i'm trying to do these little videos for you and um, help you learn about some little features or things that can help you in your designs have a great rest of the day and see you soon bye